Now, back to our program. This Mr. Robert Houdin says that what happens on stage isn't as important as what the audience thought happened on stage. Clever fellow, Robert Houdin. I've often said the same thing myself. What do you think happened today, Dr. Grimaldi? How do you suppose I got out of that trunk? You mean you don't know? I remember feeling it begin to fall. And I closed my eyes tightly and waited for it to hit the ground. The next thing I knew, I was standing on the stage. Hmm. Perhaps there wasn't enough oxygen in the trunk, which caused you to lose consciousness. That's why you can't remember how you escaped. That could be it, all right. There you are. Another mystery solved through the application of scientific deduction. Well, I'm for bed. Good night to one and all. I'm very glad you aren't hurt, Eric. Thanks. So am I. Well, good night. Good night. I guess they could be right. Maybe passed out or something. That's not what happened at all. Yeah, but how else could I... Excuse me, but did you say something? You can speak. Say something else. What did you have in mind? You can speak. But how? Same as everybody does. No magic trick about it. Why haven't you said anything before this? Didn't have anything important to say until now. Did Calpurnia and Dr. Grimaldi know about this? No. This has to be our secret. Just between you and me. Promise you won't tell. Or I won't tell you how you got out of that trunk. You know? How? First, promise. All right. Okay. I promise, not a word. Now, how'd I get out of the trunk, John? How'd I do it? Maybe I shouldn't. Yes, John. You should. I don't think you're ready to know. You're very young. I'm almost 14. I'm practically a man. I suppose you are. Long before the white man came to this land, there was only the Indian. The Indian found that wherever he went, he was confronted by an enemy. So he asked the great spirit for help. Given us much, Father, the Indian said to the Great Spirit. But we cannot fish like the bear or hunt like the panther. Give us something that we might survive among our enemies. Magic? Not magic. The power. The power. I will choose one among you, the Great Spirit said. I will teach it to him. He will be very special. So the Indian waited for the chosen one to be made known to them. Then one day, a young brave named Walking Dog found himself stranded on a precipice face to face with a hungry panther. Walking Dog knew he was about to die. He 
Sherry's eyes type calling out to the great spirit. And when the panther leaped, the walking dog vanished. The panther sailed over the precipice to his own death. Moments later, walking dog reappeared. That has been the way ever since. A chosen one is made known given the chance to learn how to use the power. Gosh. Do you think that happened to me? Did I vanish out of the trunk? Am I a chosen one? I'm afraid so. Does this mean I get the power? You have it already, but you don't know how to use it. How can I learn? To learn how to use the power, you must become a man of wisdom. You need to learn from a chosen one. John, are you a chosen one? John, could you teach me how to use the power? You said yourself I'm a chosen one. Aren't you supposed to teach me? You may not be ready. You may be unworthy. And then the great spirit will blame me for wasting a lot of his time. But I am ready. I know it. I may not be allowed to teach to a white man. Well, could you ask the great spirit about it? Maybe he'll make an exception in this case. You don't ask the Great Spirit for anything. You wait for him to tell you. I'm gonna need a sign. What kind of sign? I won't know till I see it. child, my own granddaughter, Cal Pernia. Grandfather, what is it? I'm afraid it's the Johnsons, my dearest. Grimaldi, we come for the girl. Less by chance you have the money you owe me. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I've managed to accumulate a portion of the sum, approximately 50%. You ain't got it, Pa. The gal is mine. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I appeal to you as a reasonable man. A bargain's a bargain, Grimaldi. Our deal was for payment in full. <laughs> She's real pretty, ain't she, boy? Get your hands off of me. Sir, unhand my granddaughter. She may be your granddaughter, Doc, but she belongs to me now. Where's that preacher? You boys go fetch that preacher back over here. Sir, I demand that. Let me go! Let me go! Let me go! You heard the lady. Let her go. Well, who are you, little fella? I am Eric the Great. Oh, yeah? Well, what makes you so great, Eric? <laughs> this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's real good, kid. Let me show you a trick. Wes, leave that be. No killing. No, I think you better go before there's any more trouble here. Well, you're too late, boy. Because you already got trouble. Away. Now! 
Pa, that was a rattler. What's going on here? What's the ruckus? Wes, put that sidearm away. Marshal, this kid started the whole thing. He attacked me with ribbons. Then he threw a rattlesnake at me. Rattlesnake? Yeah, but I drilled it. There it is. That? I'm telling you, Marshal, that was a rattlesnake. Come on, Wes, let's go. Mount up. This ain't over, kid. You're still promised to me, girl. I'll be back. All right, folks. Wake it up. Everybody go on back about your business. Pretty good. Best trick I ever saw. It wasn't a trick. That was the power. There's a big difference, boy. Remember that always. And if someone ever suspects that you have the power, deny it. Deny it until they believe you. Remember that always, too. That's your second lesson. You're teaching me. You got the sign, didn't you? You got the sign. Stood up to those men, knowing that they might kill you. That took courage. I knew then that you were worthy. I told you I was. Oh, boy. Just let those Johnsons try something now. No. You have a lot to learn. For one thing, you must never use the power for revenge. Otherwise, it will be taken from you. All right. I promise I won't use the power for revenge. Now, when do we start? At first light. Whoa! Sometimes I think the Great Spirit is losing his senses. I followed his instructions exactly, 5,000 paces west from the edge of town. I'm sure this is the place. This is the place, all right. John, where did you come from? I was here all the time. You just didn't see me. Will you teach me how to do that? Up here out of nowhere? Later. But I want to learn now. A man of wisdom is a man of patience. Now we have a long way to travel. And we'd better get started. Where are we going to go? To the mountains. Over there. There aren't any mountains over there, John. Close your eyes. Now do you see the mountains? How can I see the mountains with my eyes closed? A man of wisdom can see, even with his eyes shut. Now concentrate, boy. You have certain powers already. Use them. Clear your mind and concentrate. Now do you see him? I think I can see the horizon. A man of wisdom must be able to see beyond the horizon. I'm trying, John. I knew this was going to be a waste of time. I'm leaving. No, John, wait. I can do it. 
No, I can't. It's working! It's working! It's really working! John, the mountains, I can see them! This is wonderful! John? John? John, help me! John, please! Concentrate. Trust your imagination. I'm trying, John. I'm not falling. I'm not falling. I'm not falling. John, I'm flying! This is the greatest trick ever. I feel so free, so powerful, like I can do anything. Imagination is the greatest power a man of wisdom can possess, Eric. Imagination? You mean this isn't real? If you believe it's real, Eric, then it's real. I believe it. Where are we? Where would you like us to be? What? Where would you like us to be? I wouldn't mind being someplace a little more familiar. John, what's happening? How'd we get back here? Don't ask me. You did it. I did? Gosh, I'm getting pretty good at this. You still have a great deal to learn, boy. First, I must teach you how to see. I thought you already taught me how to see. I taught you how to see with your mind. Now I'll teach you how to see with your eyes. I can see with my eyes already. You look, but you don't see. I'll show you. Take a look around. Do you see it? Do you see it all? I think so. Then show it to me. What do you mean? Show it to me. You have the power. Go ahead. Show me what you saw. about them and the grass and the sky and the trees and what about the details details you're still looking Eric not seeing Too bad for someone so young and inexperienced. But you still have the most important lesson yet to learn. What's that? How to choose the right path. The right path? A man of wisdom knows what he wants and how to get it. He knows how to choose the right path. I don't understand. You want to be the greatest magician in the whole world, don't you? Yes. Then use the power to get it. Right now, just snap your fingers and everything you want can be yours. That's the easy way. Really? No, Eric. Don't listen to him. 
He's given you bad advice. A man of wisdom is patient and determined. He knows the easy path is not always the best way. Now, Eric, don't be fooled. This one is lying to you. He's teaching you to become weak. Eric, a man of wisdom, gives to the world as much as it takes. You have the power to be better than all the others. Stronger, richer. Which one of you do I listen to? Which one of you is telling me the truth? Which one of you is you? It's me, Eric. Here, you have learned the final lesson. This is yours. The power belongs to you now. Don't you have anything to say about this? I'll only say this, Eric. Don't listen to either of us. Listen only to your heart. Take the crystal, Eric. Everything you want can be yours. No. I don't think so. John? John? There, there, my child, don't cry. Everything seems darkest before the dawn. Look, here comes young Eric. What's wrong? What's happened? The Johnsons have sent word they're coming back for Calpurnia, and this time, they're bringing a preacher. Where are you going? Stop them. It's no use, Eric. There's too many of them. There's nothing you can do. It's too dangerous. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Oh, by the way, do you know where John Parker is? Haven't seen him all day. Well, when he comes back, don't tell him where I've gone. like that kid from the sideshow, Wes. You know, one made a fool of you in town. Oh, he made a big mistake coming out here. He's on Ireland now. Johnson! What are you planning to do? Hi, John. What are you doing here? I had a feeling you'd come out here today. Somebody's got to stop him, John. That Wesley Johnson's got no right to take Calpurnia's hand, debt or no debt. I told you, you can't use the power for revenge. I wasn't going to use it against them, John. Honest. I was just going to try to reason with them. I'd only use the power to defend myself. That'd be okay, wouldn't it? Self-defense, huh? What did you have in mind? Well... For example... I thought it would be okay to do... this. No, you couldn't do that. Oh. 
Well, could I do this? That might be permitted. Say, that boy's fast, huh? How'd he do that? I don't know, but he ain't gonna do it again. Wesley, put that rifle away. He's gonna slow him down, Pa. How about if I did this? What's going on here? I'm afraid I have to say no. Well, if I couldn't do that, then I know I couldn't do this. What in tarnation is going on here? You definitely cannot do that. I don't know what's going on here, and I don't care. Yeah! But what about that kid? What about my gal? That, that there's your business, huh, Wes? <laughs> Get on out of here, Jack. Yeah. No, thanks. He can have her. Yeah, come on. John, I'm really glad we had this conversation. I wouldn't want to abuse the power or anything. You are showing definite signs are becoming a man of wisdom. And now, I have something to give you. Does this mean that I know how to use the power now? This is just the first step in a life of many steps. Learning to use the power is a lifelong process. I have taught you all again. The rest is up to you. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. I give you Eric, Prince of the Air. Why do you do these things, Eric? I'm going to be the greatest magician in the world. We magicians must stick together. Eric, you're a magician. For you, Mama. I can't be a locksmith for you. I'm a magician. But Eric! I've gotta try, Theo. If I don't, I'll never really know. I'm also an escape artist. I can escape from anything. That's a bet. I want to see if the kid can do it. Please, sir, put it down. The rope won't hold. It's set to break. I can't believe this is happening. Are you all right? I think so. How did I get in here? What happened? You've been unconscious, my boy, for three days. Three days? Since the accident. What accident? The accident when you did the trunk trick. Don't you remember? You were in it when the rope broke. But I got out of the trunk. You didn't get out. Fortunately, you were thrown clear before the trunk smashed a bit at the bottom of the canyon. You've been unconscious since then. But what about the Johnsons? Very strange about the Johnsons. They left town about a week ago. Nobody really knows why. Very mysterious. They just up and left. Of course they left. It's because John and I chased them out. Didn't we, John? Tell them how we chased them out. John can't speak, Eric. You know that. Yes, he can speak. He just doesn't speak because he doesn't have anything important to say. John doesn't speak, Eric. 
because his tongue was cut out by scalp hunters when he was a boy. You mean it didn't really happen? Better rest, boy. You've had a nasty bump on your head. It's obviously confused you. It all seems so real. It seems so real. It all seemed so real. Yes, well, there you are. The closest I ever came to a mystical experience, and it was only an hallucination. No, 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 thank you. No, I've uh, had enough. Your one mystical experience, and it was just a dream. <laughs> the result of a rather nasty smack on the head. I'm afraid so. Well, what became of the others? Hmm? The Indian, the gal, Dr. Grimaldi. Grimaldi passed away two years ago, God rest his soul, at the Steel Pier in Atlantic City, where he was still performing the Palingenesia and peddling his wizard oil. 25 cents, a quarter of a dollar. And the gal, Calpurnian, <laughs> what became of your great love? It faded and became great affection. About a year after I left, she married a newspaper fellow from St. Louis and was, at last word, expecting her fourth child. My one consolation was that she named her eldest boy Eric. And the Indian, what happened to him? One morning, shortly after I awoke from my strange dream, John Parker vanished. He went out to gather some firewood and never returned. We searched and searched, but could find no trace of him. Grimaldi thought that he had gone back to his tribe. What did you think? At the time, I thought that he had changed himself into a wolf again and disappeared into the wilderness. But. Now, I think he probably went back to his tribe. <sighs> oh, God, bless my soul. Look at the time. 5 a.m. We've talked the entire night away. <laughs> well, I, I must be off. You know, Houdini, you never cease to amaze me. Well, my dear chap, many thanks. For the evening's entertainment. All of it. The pleasure is all mine, Arthur. I uh, expect to see you again. Oh, good night, my dear old chap. Good night, Arthur. You know, Houdini, perhaps what you say about the magical is true. Perhaps some things are just tricks. Hmm? Perhaps some things just are, Arthur. Perhaps some things just are. <laughs>